Wednesday. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The moment you shift how you think about yourself and your circumstances, both you and those circumstances will begin to change. Hello, this is Dane Spots. I'm sure you've heard the idea that our thoughts somehow shape the reality we experience, that negative thoughts influence the world around us and bring about negative circumstances, while positive thoughts somehow bring about positive circumstances. Well, an entire industry of motivational speakers has been created around this premise. Almost all of us have been exposed to the tenets of positive thinking. But if it works so well, then why isn't everyone who attends these seminars and reads these books rich and successful, and most of all, happy? If all we need to do is to think positive thoughts, we should be able to create a positive world almost overnight, shouldn't we? What's wrong with this picture? Well, I've spent the last 20 years trying to find out. And what I've discovered is a philosophy that I'll share with you along with a set of tools and programs I think will not only be a tremendous benefit, but will literally allow you to become your potential and derive the maximum pleasure out of life. Much of what I'm about to share with you will seem simple in concept. The best ideas usually are. And so I should warn you that there's a tendency to view these simple ideas from a surface level without really internalizing and practicing them. Therefore, I recommend that you listen to this tape a minimum of four times. Ten times would be even better. And each time you hear these ideas, rather than using your rational intellectual mind, which analyzes things to death, use your playful risk-taking side and make the effort to incorporate these tools into your daily life. The reason I'm asking this of you is because I know that most of you will listen to this tape once and then stick it on a shelf and you'll never really use the material. I want you to use this stuff, to practice it and internalize it. You see, it takes a commitment, a conscious commitment, to make positive change occur on a subconscious level. The tools and reprogramming processes must be used to make them work. Look. Here's something I want you to realize right now. The old you will do everything in its power to prevent change. It will come up with excuses for not listening to the tapes. It will procrastinate and make excuses for not using these ideas and programs, even if they're good for you. And the reason why you'll do that to yourself is because the old you is comfortable. It has a built-in survival mechanism to protect the status quo. And that's why change is so difficult. And it's also why positive thinking on a surface level always fails. Millions and millions of people attend positive thinking seminars or buy books and tapes each year, yet very few derive lasting benefits from them. If you've ever attended any of these seminars or read any of these books, you're usually high from the motivational uplift for about two days. Then you go back to your old self again. Listen, it isn't that the material isn't valid or doesn't work, it does. It's just that the positive thinking and motivational stories deal only with your conscious mind. And that conscious mind is not the engine that powers your life. Rather, it's the subconscious or the unconscious portions of your mind from which your behavior and attitudes spring. Going directly into the unconscious and rewiring how you think about yourself and your future is the key to permanent and lasting change. And that's precisely what we'll be addressing in this program. Okay, let's begin. First off, let me give you the philosophy behind this program and also answer the question of just how our thinking and beliefs on a subconscious level affects our wealth, our health, and our success or failure in any undertaking. Let me read you something that sums up rather nicely the point of all of this. What we believe determines what we make true. Let me read that again to you. What we believe determines what we make true. Our perceptions of reality, how we think about ourselves and the world around us, what we look for and what we take to be true is determined by our beliefs. Alter a belief and you can change reality, or at least the reality that you experience. What I'm saying is that through your beliefs, you form your reality. A friend of mine who's a very successful and very wealthy real estate entrepreneur 
started without a single dime in his pocket, and he was able to amass a great fortune in only a few years with a simple philosophy of faking it until he made it. He convinced himself on a subconscious level that he had already acquired a great fortune, when in fact he was really broke. In his mind he became a millionaire. The circumstances that brought about that reality then followed. Now I'm sure that you've heard similar stories. What we take to be true on a subconscious level becomes our reality. Now does that mean that skill and luck don't play a role in wealth and prosperity? Well, money-making skills are learned and begin with a desire and a belief that it's possible. Remember, what we believe is based on our perceptions and what we perceive depends upon what we look for. And what we look for depends upon what we think. And luck, and we all know of those people who seem to be exceptionally lucky, is created out of a core belief that good things should happen. It's an expectation. Expect to be lucky and you will be. It's as simple as that. Now you've probably seen this happen to you all the time, but in reverse. You know when you tell yourself that you're having a bad day and sure enough you do. What we believe determines what we make true. And that's the entire premise of this idea as well as the tape. Are you still with me? What I'm telling you here is nothing new. In fact, it's very old. Philosophers and great thinkers have been saying it for thousands of years. The Roman philosopher Marcus Aurelius said, Our light is what our thoughts make of it. Napoleon Hill said exactly the same thing in Think and Grow Rich. And everyone since has said the same basic idea. But that doesn't necessarily help you make it work better in your life. You see, you've got to break through an encrusted mind script that's made up of years of negative programming. That's why we've created mind development tools here at Zygon. Because the purpose of these tools is to deal with the issue of beliefs and behavior at the deepest levels of your being and to anchor these new beliefs into your subconscious where your beliefs are formed and reinforced by your perceptions and thus made true. To create lasting change you must rescript the core set of beliefs that forms how you think and perceive your reality. Inside our subconscious minds we have scripted what we see as the truth. Remember what we accept to believe as true is true or becomes true, period. And any evidence contrary to our core beliefs is discarded or perceptually modified by our brains. So if you've been told all your life that you'll never amount to anything or believe that being wealthy is something beyond your grasp, then that is the mind script that is welded into your subconscious. And then that's the reality you will experience. Now, enough talk about that. Let me give you now a very simple and very powerful tool that you can use to create the reality that you'd like to experience, to attract wealth and prosperity, to bring forth loving and positive relationships, to make you shine and glow and achieve in every area of your life. It's a process I call visioneering. What is it? Well, it's a program of mental rehearsal of future events that anchors successful images to positive emotions through a simple visualization technique. It also programs the subconscious to bring forth a desired goal into reality. Now, you're probably familiar with visualization techniques and perhaps you've experimented with them in your life. That's good. Most people try it for a while but then they give up, usually for two reasons. The first is that the old you creeps in again with excuses for not changing. And also because you may not have been doing it right, so you never really noticed any positive feedback to justify continuing doing it. Well, I'm going to give you a super simple solution that's going to work incredibly well, but it's up to you to use it. And there are three steps in the process. Before I give them to you, let me give you a bit of a tip. You must set up a regular time each and every day for your visioneering session. We're talking about five minutes a day. Five minutes and you can achieve any worthwhile goal that you desire. Morning or night, it doesn't really matter. Just give yourself the five minutes. You're worth it. Now this five minutes must be exclusively devoted to the visioneering process. Okay, are you ready for a session? Get into a comfortable position, close your eyes, 
and with your eyes closed, roll them upwards slightly, as if you're trying to see the center of your forehead, and listen to yourself breathe. Focus your attention on slowly taking deep breaths and on the sound of the air coming in and out of your lungs. Feel yourself relax. Do this breathing exercise five times. It will only take 45 seconds or so as you focus on your breathing. This is a simple relaxation exercise that will immediately alter your consciousness, putting your brain into an alpha state. In fact, if you were to hook yourself up to an EEG machine while doing this simple procedure, you would see an increase in alpha wave production emitting from your brain. And in only 45 seconds, you know there are seminars that charge upwards of $500 to teach you this. Okay, so you've learned how to induce an alpha brainwave state in 45 seconds. The next step is to pick out an image of a past memory where you were extremely happy. Really get in touch with that experience. It doesn't really matter what it is or when it happened. The point is to conjure up a winning feeling or a positive emotion that you can then use to connect with your image of a future event. Perhaps this is an image of the moment you remember falling in love or receiving a standing ovation during a high school play. Go back into your past and pull out a very specific event that you will relive in every detail. Feel the paths on your back, the loving adulation. Remember the voices, the smells, the colors. As you recreate this scene, let yourself re-experience all of those winning feelings. What you're doing here is bringing forward into your consciousness a positive emotion that will psychologically become connected with a future goal in your subconscious. This has the effect of anchoring that desired goal into the subconscious mind so that it's energized and becomes a subconscious reality. Now, making it happen is really quite easy because if the subconscious mind believes it, it will alter your perceptions and will look for it to make it into a reality. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Okay, once you've relived that positive moment and felt those winning feelings welling up inside of you, the next step is to envision the future goal that you want to achieve as vividly as possible. It can be through a mental picture, a word, a musical note, a taste. In fact, any sensory image that you can think of. Each person is different. Some people respond better to pictures, while others words. The key point here is to see yourself as if you've already achieved that goal, whether it's in the form of a picture, a feeling, or words. If it's money, see yourself as already having it. Perhaps the images are of you going to the bank with a big deposit, or you're sitting at your desk at work piled high with hundred dollar bills. Smell the money, roll in it, throw it in the air, See yourself walking down the street wearing the finest clothes, driving your dream car, and hearing the whispers and comments of your friends wondering how you ever got so successful. If you're a student taking a test, see that big red A plus marked across the top of your exam. If you're a salesperson, see yourself actually closing the sale. If you're giving a speech, see the audience clapping for you and telling you what a wonderful job that you've done. Let's say you want a vacation home on Cape Cod or in Malibu. Picture yourself walking through the front door, noticing the color and the texture of the walls, the lawn, the roof, the entry area. Go ahead and walk through the entire home in your mind, filling in the details exactly as you would like them to be in your reality. Give your images as much richness and detail as you possibly can. And don't worry if at first your images are a bit fuzzy, the process improves with practice. Tie in sounds, smells, and touch. In fact, the more senses and the greater the specificity, the more ammunition that you're giving your subconscious mind to believe it and then to act on it. Okay, you get the idea. Now let's review the steps here. First, you get comfortable. Close your eyes and roll them upward, focusing your breathing for five breaths. Second, Recreate a winning feeling by bringing forth a positive image from your past and reliving it for a minute or two. Three, envision your future goal as if you've already achieved it. 
and do a mental rehearsal of that event or objective with as much color and detail as possible. Now there's one last thing that I want you to do at the end of every session that may seem a bit strange at first, but it's very powerful and very important. When you open your eyes, I want you to say the following out loud. I now allow myself to have and then fill in the blank with whatever it was that you want. And then say, so be it, it is done. This simple statement to yourself affirms the goal that you've just programmed and releases it. Why release it? What you want to do after affirming it is to release it and not dwell on it. Dwelling on something is like telling your subconscious mind that you don't really believe that it's possible. It's like wanting something too badly. You know when you want something too much and that you're afraid that you're not going to get it? This is what I call the choke syndrome. When you try too hard, you choke on it. And it's a very easy thing to do. People who wish for something fall prey to this all the time. However, if you visioneer it, you've already created it. Now release it and let it go. By letting go of it, you're actually programming into your subconscious the belief that you expect it to happen. And dwelling on it only creates mental doubt that you believe it's really possible. And there's something else too. You must believe that you deserve it and not feel the least bit guilty about it. For many of us, we have an unconscious guilt about being happy. And you need to remove those feelings from your subconscious once and for all. Why would we feel guilty about being happy? Well, it's because somewhere along the line, our parents, our schools, our churches, or our friends have programmed into us that we have to suffer to be happy or pay a price for happiness or that just when things are starting to get good they all turn bad well that's all a lot of hogwash people say those things because they themselves have a belief system of limitation and lack they believe at a core level that they don't deserve success and happiness so why should anyone else most people think that happiness comes out of being successful or having good health when in fact the reverse is true. Happiness is not something that's earned or deserved. Happiness is simply a state of mind by which our thinking is positive a good share of the time. If you wait until you feel deserving of having pleasant thoughts about your life, you'll end up convincing your subconscious that you're undeserving of happiness. And the result is you'll be unhappy and unsuccessful in most of your undertakings. It's not selfish or wrong to be happy, regardless of where you are in life. So be happy. Happiness is a means to an end, success and well-being. And it's also an end in and of itself that we all desire. Happiness is not something that happens to you. It's something that you cultivate, that you determine and control. If you're waiting for happiness to happen to you, you're going to have a long wait. Instead, leapfrog to it right now. How do you do that? Well, it's really very simple. By being and acting happy, even when you're not. It's what all winners do, and it's what you should do, and do it now. Here are the three components that will allow you to create the mental habit of being happy the majority of the time and winning in every circumstance that you encounter. The first aspect of this is to not allow any outward experiences to influence you about how you think about yourself. You do this by changing the way that you react to circumstances. Instead of being a participant in the circumstance, be apart from it. Let's say you're a salesperson and you make sales and you create commissions for a living. And you've just spent the last three months of your time and money putting together a major deal and it's just getting ready to close when your prospect backs out at the last minute. Your commission was big bucks and you see it all going down the drain before your very eyes. And you say to yourself, I just knew this was a lousy business. Why did I ever go into this business in the first place? People are rotten. Now I have to start all over again. Whoa, wait a minute, time out. Stand outside of this picture for a moment. The circumstances are that the deal fell through. But how you react to it will have everything to do with your happiness and the success of future deals. Instead of moaning and feeling helpless, make a conscious habit of reacting aggressively and positively towards threats and problems. Don't let it affect you personally. 
It's just another deal in a world that's full of deals. Move on to the next one. When you can mentally control the circumstances and never see failures as failures, you'll be amazed at how much easier life will become. Every human being that's alive is presented with challenges and obstacles. It's only how we perceive them that makes them negative or positive. The second component of this concept is to consciously practice living your life in the present, not the past nor the future. You can envision the future the way that you want it to be in your visioneering sessions, but don't make the mistake of living in it. The secret of being alive and always happy is to experience the present. Think back for a moment of the happiest times in your life. I'll bet those were moments that you were totally absorbed and focused in the present. And you were happiest because you felt so alive, so in touch with the experience of living. You weren't thinking about the past or the future because you were too busy living in the now. This is one of the secrets of truly happy people. They're absolutely absorbed in the feeling of being alive. Let me give you an example that almost anyone can relate to. Making love is perhaps one of the most physically and psychologically satisfying things you can do. Why? Because your energy is so focused and so concentrated in the moment that feeling of being alive is incredibly intense. And you want to know something interesting? Many Vietnam vets will admit that the time when they felt most alive was when they were in country, walking out in some rice paddy. As strange as it may seem for these soldiers, that was the time that they felt most alive. By living your daily life with focus and concentration, you will not only perform at your best, but the intense pleasures you will derive from just living will dramatically increase. And there's a simple way to go about doing this that I learned from the famous author Ray Bradbury. To help him focus his daily writing, he had a sign that he put on his desk that said, don't think, don't try, just do. And that's really what it's all about. Thinking and trying give your subconscious the wrong message. Just by doing, your subconscious autopilot will automatically steer you in the right direction. The third and final point I want to make here is for you to make happiness a habit. Link it in with your self-image. Regardless of your fears, anxieties, and circumstances, make happiness the choice that you pick. See yourself as happy. Focus on the details of the moment and take the time to love and appreciate the magnificence of the world around you. By affirming life and moving forward through life's experiences with an attitude that says yes to all the circumstances that you encounter, you'll program your subconscious to deliver a meaningful and joyful existence. It's true, and it's not that difficult if you don't think or try, but just do. You know, science is just now catching on to the immense powers of the mind. Powers to spontaneously heal disease, powers to overcome extreme handicaps, both physical and psychological, and powers to live a life filled with joy and happiness. You know, we spend hours in a gym conditioning our bodies to look and feel their best, but very little time developing our most valuable resource, our minds. And the more you condition your mind for success, the more you will have. Computer programmers have a term they use called garbage in and garbage out. A badly programmed computer is doomed to spit out bad information. And that's the same with your mind. Make a point of using this program on a regular and consistent basis. And do the visioneering exercises on the little things as well as the big things that you want. You'll be amazed at how effortless it will make your life. And finally, why not just for the heck of it, create a habit of being happy all the time. Make a conscious decision to take aggressive action in the circumstances of your life and resolve to become the best that you can be. These simple things will have a dramatic effect on your reality. Follow this program and one year from now I guarantee you'll be totally amazed at the transformation and the positive direction that your life takes. Thank you for listening and until next time, this is Dane Spots.